Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PTR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. For tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss everything there is to know in fantasy football. As always, I'm your host, Jeremiah Martinez, and I do this show so light every Tuesday morning. It is about 9.15 on this uh, beautiful Tuesday, and it is election day, day, guys, so don't forget to go out and vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. This isn't that kind of show. I'm just saying, go out. And vote, but anyway, let's talk about uh, some Monday night craziness last night. Yes, uh, the Seattle Seahawks defeated the Buffalo Bills thirty-one to twenty-five, and man, what a crazy game! Crazy game, crazy calls. But uh, we like always, we're gonna talk this from a fantasy perspective. And man, what a game from Jimmy Graham last night! He was just wild. He was wild last night. Man, oh man, two. One-handed catches on a touchdown? You got to be kidding me. Got to be kidding me. But anyways, yeah, what a great game from Jimmy Graham last night. He he is for sure a top three option week in and week out. He's finally involved in this offense now. Uh, we've seen it earlier this year. This is the reason why the Seattle Seahawks traded for him before last season. This is what they envisioned from him having. And he just a whole – he brings a whole – Another le- he brings the Seattle Seahawks uh, offense to a whole another level, and you know the tight end position. This is what the Seattle Seahawks wanted from the tight end position when they brought Jimmy Graham over, and man, we're finally seeing it coming in fruition now. He is the I think he's probably the top target in this offense now. I think he's surpassed Doug Baldwin. I think we saw it from last night, and I think Doug Baldwin is still a very valuable fantasy commodity, but Doug Baldwin has has kind of failed to replicate the same success he had late last season to this year. You never know. He might go on another late season, you know, scoring binge. Uh, that remains to be seen. He had, Doug Baldwin actually had a pretty decent game last night. He did have uh, 89 yards on six targets, and he did get a big 30-yard reception that set up the Seahawks' first scoring play. And I do think Doug Baldwin has kind of taken a step back a little bit. Um, I thought he was emerging as a top receiver at the beginning of the year. Um, but it looks like Jimmy Graham is the top target in this offense. And so, you know, Jimmy Graham, top target. Doug Baldwin, the second target. After that, though, Jim, you know, Jermaine Curse and Tyra Lockett, who I thought was going to be a fantasy breakout star this year. Uh, Tyler Lockett looks like he's kind of not involved in his offense anymore. Uh, I, I know they try to they try to run. They did a run play with him last night. He was actually the leading rusher for the Seahawks last night, 13 yards on one carry. That's actually kind of abysmal. Uh, the Seahawks only had 33 total carries last night. I mean, 33 total rushing yards. It's kind of abysmal. But... It looks like Doug Baldwin looks like he's shaping up more as a kind of like a a receiver too. Uh, maybe your third best receiver on the team, but there's no way he is a receiver one. Uh, I just don't see the targets. Uh, well, not the targets. I just don't see the same success that Baldwin has last year. I just don't see that same guy. And don't get me wrong, Doug Baldwin has the potential to have 
He has the potential to go bonkers week in, week out. He's kind of more of a boom or bust play now. Um, I think he's someone that you kind of have to play your matchups with. Uh, for example, I have Doug Baldwin on my team, and I didn't start him last night because I thought the Bills would have kind of contained him well. I thought this was going to be more of a game that the Seahawks would use Christine Michael in, and it was the total opposite. The Seahawks didn't even run that much at all, and which was kind of shocking to me. And with Thomas Rawls and CJ Prosite now kind of in the mix now, I'm talking about Prosite, who is kind of like kind of emerged as the receiving back now, and he's kind of getting more involved in the running game. And with Thomas Ross coming back, I think that kind of it's going to hurt Christine Michael. Christine Michael hasn't had a good game in weeks. He he did have a touchdown last night, but that was for one yard, and that was his only yard he had the whole game. He had five carries. He is not the same guy we saw beginning of the year. Don't get me wrong, Christine Michael was still an athletic, uh, one of the athletic running backs in this league, but. I just don't see the same Christine Michael that I saw from earlier in the year. And ProSite looks like he's getting more involved in this offense. I think someone he think he needs to be on your waiver uh, fantasy uh, radar a little bit. Uh, Thomas Ross looks like someone he's going to get really highly involved in this offense again. Because remember, Thomas Ross did have a pretty good year late last season taking over for Marshawn Lynch. I think he's going to be. I think he's going to take over that running back position for the Seahawks. But we could be looking at a three-person committee here in Seattle, and that's going to be bad for fantasy purposes. So I do think the person you really want to own the Seahawks, or I should say, must start, is probably Jimmy Graham. I think he's a must start moving forward if he hasn't been already. Doug Baldwin, he's someone that needs to be on rosters. And, of course, I think Russell Wilson finally is back to being a very valuable fantasy quarterback. We did it. He was seen it last night. He had one touchdown on the ground, two through the air. Both of them were to Jimmy Graham, 282. Very efficient. And I do think those are guys that uh, are must-starts on, uh, on your team from the Seahawks. That's Russell Wilson and Jimmy Graham. But let's move on to the Buffalo Bills side here. Uh, Tyrell Taylor actually looked impressive last night. He looked really, really impressive. Um, and he didn't have the big fantasy numbers, and I get that. But he he looked really good. He looked really good. Uh, that's probably the best game I've ever seen from Tyrell Taylor in a while. And, you know, he did have a touchdown on the ground. Uh, he did have a touchdown through the air. He did throw a pick, but he also had 289 yards. And that was a very efficient uh, fantasy performance from him, in my opinion. I think that's the best he's looked all year. And I think he's someone that uh, kind of kind of needs to, I wouldn't say he's a must start right away, but he's definitely on the QB1 radar. I think he's definitely going towards that direction. And don't get me wrong, this is still a run first team in Buffalo. Uh, LaShawn McCoy did come back uh, from injury. He got 85 yards. Looked really good, too. He still had that burst that we all custom seen from Shady. And, you know, Tyrell Taylor did get 43 yards on the ground. So we love seeing that from Tyrell Taylor. He's always a dual threat quarterback. That's why I think he's a very valuable fantasy quarterback. And Mike Gillisey had a touchdown of 32 yards. Uh, very pretty, uh, pretty decent performance from him. Uh, you know, he did take over the running back position last week when McCoy was hurt did pretty decently well but it's good to see Shady back and he didn't get a touchdown he did get a vulture by Gillespie but McCoy looked like he's back to being you know the for sure start for Buffalo I think he is a must start again he's always going to be in the RB1 conversation and I do think McCoy you can't hesitate to start him and for the receivers in Buffalo, man, what a game for Robert Woods. What a game. That's the best game I've seen from Robert Woods ever. And he looks like he has emerged as a top target in Buffalo uh, since Sammy Watkins is not there. He might come back. He may not. Uh, but as long as Sammy Watkins is not active, I think Robert Woods, 
I think he's someone that needs to be on your roster. I think he does. I think he, even through the Buffalo Bills bye week, they have a bye week week 10. I think he's someone that you need to, I think you need to pick up. I think he's someone that has emerged as a top target for Tyrell Taylor. He made an incredible catch on third and 21 last night. Man, made a great catch. Was always there for Tyrell Taylor. Very reliable. He had 13 targets. That's the highest of the Bills last night. He had 13 targets. The next the next highest was five for Marquise Goodwin. So that is saying a lot. That he Tyrod was looking toward Robert Woods' way the entire night against this pretty tough uh, Seattle Seahawks secondary. And I do think he's someone that needs to be on your radar. But we're going to take our first break here at the uh, Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. And I'm going to talk about some top performers uh, especially some running backs. Yes, one bounce back and one just keeps rolling, keeps running, and he keeps and he has emerged as an elite running back. I got two running backs I'm going to talk about specifically, as well as other top performers from Week 9. And I will have that for you when we get back here at the Golden State Media Contest Fantasy Football Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Consoles Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremiah Martinez, like always. And I'm going to talk about a couple of running backs like I teased before the break. Uh, one of them is Mark Ingram. And, man, he has bounced back from a ter- well, probably his worst game of his entire career. And a, against Seattle in Week 8, he only had five yards rushing. Three attempts. They lose a fumble. So he had pretty much a negative point. He had pretty much a negative one fantasy performance that game. He got benched for Tim Hightower, who carried it for more than 25 times, had over 100 yards in that game. He looked like he was about to emerge as the workhorse for the Saints. He was a top waiver wire pickup for Week 9. And, you know, he did get the start against the Niners. Hightower ran most of the – pretty much ran – had most of the snaps are running back during the first quarter. And then once Mark Ingram got into the game during the second quarter, he ran wild on the 49ers defense like everyone and their mama does. He ran through this 49ers defense. He had his best performance all year, probably his best fantasy performance ever. And he had 158 yards, 15 attempts, and a touchdown. And it looks like Martin Ingram is finally going back into the RB1 conversation. He does play the Denver Broncos next Sunday. But remember, the Denver Broncos did allow three touchdown runs and over 100 yards rushing to Latavius Murray. Uh, I think Martin Ingram is a more talented running back than Latavius Murray is. And the Saints are more, even more explosive offense than the Raiders are right now. And I think you might have to consider starting Ingram against the Broncos defense. Because remember, they gave up a lot of points to Latavius Murray. So I think he's someone that has to be on the kind of like in your lineup this uh, this Sunday for Week 10. But I want to talk about another running back who probably has had a breakout season. And that is Melvin Gordon. He is among the elite running backs in this league this year. And man, man, he just ran wild against the Tennessee Titans defense. Man, oh man, he had he ran the ball 32 times, uh, 196 yards, and he had one touchdown. He has he averaged 6.1 yards a carry. Man, and Melvin Gordon has been really really consistent this year. He's been really consistent. Don't forget, he was one of the best 
running backs in college too when he was in Wisconsin, and I know that is in uh, college. But he look he's having he's he's a breakout star this year. I think, in my opinion, he looks like he's going to be among the top ten fantasy running backs this year. And I don't have any question that he can continue this success. Uh, you know, going through his game log here week by week, you know, he does have, he has a lot of touchdowns as nine. He looks like he is on pace for probably around 20. Uh, I know that's saying a lot. That's a lot. And yeah, but uh, he looks really good. He looks really good. And he looks like he has probably emerged himself as the, well, he has, he was the workhorse in this team. But the fact that he is so involved in this offense, the fact that he has took his game to another level, that, sh- that should help out Phillip Rivers as well to set up the pass. And this offense looks like it's more scary than today because this is an offense that can score points. And Melvin Ingram always gets his tel- – Melvin, not Melvin Ingram, Melvin Gordon always gets his touches in the red zone. And Melvin Gordon right now currently is on pace for 16 touchdowns. Uh 13 and 65 yards and he's probably on pace to get uh you know seven no he's on he, he's currently averaging he's currently averaging 10.1 yards uh per catch uh in the passing game so he's highly involved as well and he's also on pace to get four touchdowns through the air and 505 yards and the passing game so it looks like Melvin Gordon is someone that has to solidify himself as a must start uh there's no question about it he he is a must start moving forward but uh let's move on to some other players this past weekend that had a really good uh fantasy performance I did mention like Tavis Murray earlier uh in the when I was talking about Mark, in- uh, Mark Ingram but Mark in- the Tavis Murray had a great game against a very good defense and I know the Denver defense was banged up coming into this game but Natavius Murray, three touchdowns and 114 yards. He had probably his best game of his career. And he looked like he is back to being the workhorse for the Oakland Raiders. He looks like he is back to be the Scherf number one running back in this offense. Because remember, there's some questions coming in that there was going to be a committee in Oakland with DeAndre Washington and Jalen Richard. And those guys do look good. But. I feel like those guys are more suited to be a change of pace back. Latavius Murray, he looks like he is the guy finally back to being the guy to own in Oakland. And I want to talk about Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota just continues to impress me this year. Uh, he's someone that's a rising star in this league. He had a great performance. Uh, he did have one touchdown on the ground, and he had two through the air. He actually had three through the air, I might add against the San Diego Chargers, a defense that really has not been good historically in the past couple of years. Uh, probably one of his best games of the season. Um, literally brought the team back from behind. And he looks like he's someone that's on the QB1 radar moving forward. Uh, but man, Marcus Mario has been fun to watch this year. If you have him on your fantasy team, keep him. Do not drop him. I did say he was a uh, bi-week replacement couple weeks back but he is more than that now i think he's someone that is pretty much pretty valuable now he is really valuable in this in this uh in fantasy and we'll talk about another a uh, couple other quarterbacks here you know matt ryan doing the same thing he always does i did talk about him on thursday but i want to go over his numbers again uh he did have four touchdowns 344 yards no question about it always week in week out matt ryan has been one of the top quarterbacks in fantasy it looks like he's not, that's not going away anytime soon. Aaron Rodgers has always been a very good fantasy quarterback. 297 yards, three touchdowns. Looks like he's not going anywhere. Mike, At- Mike Evans, who I talked about uh, on Friday's show, he had a good, probably a great game, 150 yards and two touchdowns. He's going to concussion protocol, but it looks like he's on track to start on Sunday. So... He's someone that uh, should probably be in your lineups if he does start. Uh, Drew Brees has absolutely torched the 49ers defense like everyone their mama does. Uh, he had 323 yards and three touchdowns. I shouldn't say anything else about him. Eli Manny looks like he's back to being on the QB1 radar. He had four touchdowns. He did have two picks, but 257 yards through the air. 
uh, two of those touchdowns did go to Odell Beckham Jr. Looks like Odell Beckham Jr. is finally back to being Odell Beckham Jr. that we're accustomed to seeing. And, of course, we got Dak Prescott going against the Browns. He did have three touchdowns, uh, 247 passing yards. And it looks like he's kind of, I think he's on the QB1 radar as well. He does have a really good match against the Steelers. I think he's a perfect bye week replacement this weekend. Colin Kaepernick, uh, he had a pretty decent performance. He was on the streaming radar for some people. Um, he absolutely torched the Saints defense first half. Probably the first half he's ever played in a while. But, he, of course, he slowed down. He had 398 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. And, yeah, that's not going to – the yardage looked nice. But second half, Colin Kaepernick did not good, look good at all. And I think he's someone that he kind of had to stay away from. He looks like he's kind of getting more comfortable in the Chip Coy offense. But, you know, he's still very inconsistent on a couple of the short throws. And, you know, and we got a couple of other top performers uh, from this weekend. Uh, you got Jason Witten, who had his best game in a while. Uh, he had 134 yards and a touchdown. And that was his first 100-yard game since 2013. That is, wow, he was a beast in this game against the Browns. Uh, Michael Thomas looks like he's on his way to being a must-start. Uh, he absolutely torched the 49ers defense. Uh, two touchdowns, the same three yards. He's someone that's training upward. Frank Gord has been Mr. Reliable again. Two touchdowns and 60 yards against the Green Bay Packers. Mr. Reliable or the Inconvenient Truth, as you like to call him. Looks like he's a valuable fantasy running back. And Jay Ajayi continues to score. Uh, he know, he did have 111 yards and a touchdown. He has a touchdown and I think in like five straight games now. And it looks like he is... I can I'm finally saw him being a RB one now. If you and he looks like he is a top ten start week in and week out. And the Dolphins finally have a running game, and they're going to use him heavily to help out Ryan Tannehill and this offense. Uh, but those are some of this week's top performers uh, from Week Nine. And when we get back here on the Going to Meet Constance Fans Football Podcast, I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you like every Tuesday the top waiver wire pickups of the week. This is the top waiver wire pickups for week 10. And I'll have that for you when I get back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA Podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA-podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G smcpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back to the Going to Me Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. And now it is time for the top of our pickups of Week 10. And I got a couple of names here. Uh, you know, I try to keep it to five, uh, five to four. And, but the first name on the list is actually two names. And the reason why I put them together is because they're on the same team. And I got Rob Kelly and Chris Thompson of the Washington Redskins. I do think they're one of the top way ride pickups this week. Uh, you know, Matt Jones was out of the lineup week eight against the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, the game in London. Uh, Kelly did carry the ball 21 times for 87 yards and a touchdown. And the Washington Redskins tie against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Washington is returning back from a bye. Uh, Jay Gruden has said that Kelly is a league back and Mike Jones will earn more work. But I do think Chris Thompson, you know, has earned a role as well. He does have 418 yards from scrimmage this season with just over a half of that yards coming from his 27 receptions. So Chris Thompson is heavily involved in the passing game. I think he's going to be that guy. And it looks like Rob Kelly is going to be the lead back. And, you know, Matt Jones looks like he's gone not going to be anywhere near a football so i do think these are two guys that are need to be owned and you know kirk cousins does throw it a lot so i do think these guys uh will not throw it a lot but 
the the offense for Washington um, is going. It it will be uh, kind of like a bounce attack. Uh, so I do think whenever Kirk Cousins is in trouble, he's going to try to find Chris Thompson. And Rob Kelly looks like he's going to get the, a lot of carries the majority of the game. So I do think these guys are very valuable ads for this week. But of course, I would put Rob Kelly ahead of Chris Thompson because it looks like Rob Kelly will get a lot more touches through the ground. And I'm going to go with Chris Ivory next on the waiver wire pickups of the week. Uh, Chris Ivory looks like he's back to being the number one guy in Jacksonville. Uh, I assume that he is, you know, with an 18 carry and 107 yard performance against the Chiefs. He didn't have a touchdown this game, but he did out snap TJ Yeldon 43 to 34. Uh, and Chris Ivory did, did fumble a goal line carry late in the game, but. You know, Chris Ivory looks like he's going to be the lead guy there. Um, you know, he beginning of beginning of last season looks like Chris Ivory is on his way to being a top fantasy running back. He did kind of fall off late in the year. It looks like the roles have reversed, and it looks like and it looks like Chris Ivory is going to on his way to being a top fantasy running back towards the crunch time of the year when teams are trying to go ahead and get into the playoffs or teams that are already in the playoffs probably could use him. So I do think he's someone that's going to be uh, pretty heavily used in the Jacksonville Jaguars offense who who are trying to get a running game back, to especially help with the young quarterback there, Blake Bortles, and the rest of that offense. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, DeWan Harris of the San Francisco 49ers. It's one of my top waiver wire pickups. And Harris looks like he was a beast running with the ball uh, on Sunday against the Saints. Uh, he did have a 142-yard performance. That was so shockingly surprising. I didn't think I thought he was gonna have a good game, but I didn't think he was gonna have a great game. 142 yards from scrimmage to go along with the touchdown, which was a 47-yard swing pass from Colin Kaepernick. Uh, I think even when Hyde comes back, I think Harris has settled in as a complimentary back, especially in a pass catching role, because I think Harris is I think he's I think he's made most of his, uh, I think he looks more of the pass catching back to me because he couldn't really get anything on the ground against the Saints. He did have 10 carries for 59 yards, but it looks like he's better suited to be a pass catching back. And I think we, and he has surpassed Sean Drone and Mike Davis as the, uh, as the second day, as the second string running back there. But even when Carlos Hyde comes back, I do think, Dewan Harris is going to be heavily used in the passing game. And that might hurt Carlos Hyde's value a little bit. But I do think, you know, Hyde is going to be pretty much the bell cow of the, uh, of the offense. But Harris looks like he has earned a role there, especially in the passing game. And I think that's very valuable, especially in a Chip Kelly offense. And Peyton Barber from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers looks like he might make a start this week. Uh, if it looks like Doug Martin has not practiced, Jock Chris Waters has not practiced, but if one of them is back this week, then Payne Barber's fantasy value will certainly take a hit. But if none of them are back, I think Barber is going to be a popular pickup this week. And I do think he's someone you might have to consider starting this week. He, uh, he is going to get a lot of carries and he might be a really good flex play. He is playing the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, they are tough defense. They are tough against the run. But I do think he's someone that needs to be added if Doug Baldwin and Jaquiz Rogers were to miss some time. And, uh, of course, uh, my last waiver wire pickup of the week has to be J.J. Nelson of the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Michael Floyd ha is nowhere to be found in his offense. J.J. Nelson has been promoted as a starter, so he's ahead of Michael Floyd, uh, maybe even John Brown. So it looks like it's going to be J.J. Nelson, John Brown, and Larry Fitzgerald. The only thing I would worry about is, you know, the offense, the ability of the offense to throw down the field, especially with the way Carson Palmer has kind of taken a step back this year. But, you know, Nelson did have a big day against the Panthers in Week 8. He did have 79 yards and two touchdowns. And he has probably the golden matchup. Like every week, he is playing the 49ers, and I think he's someone you have to consider starting if you add him. And that's why I think he's one of the top waiver wire pickups this week. Good opponent, offense that can have potential to throw down the field, and he's on the starting depth chart. What else do you need? 
All right, well, that was a, this week's Top Way Ride Pickups, and that concludes the show. And I'll be back on Friday. Uh, like always, I will be back here with Anthony, but I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Going to Me Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. You can catch the show every week on a variety of platforms as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and of course on the website gsmcpodcast.com. You can follow the show at Twitter at gsmc underscore football and on Instagram at the same handle. That is at gsmc underscore football. And you can also like the show on Facebook at the Fantasy Football Podcast. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, the Golden State Media Fantasy Football Podcast. And as always, I'm Jeremiah. Anthony will be back on Friday. And we will discuss probably the Thursday night game. The for, uh, we're going to discuss some players who we think are for real. And, of course, we're going to tell you who to start and who to sit. Uh, but as always, I'm Jeremiah. And you guys have a wonderful day. <laughs>